guys welcome back to my channel how to design like a professional designer secrets tips tricks and hacks my name is Lori and today we're going to talk about positioning your furniture which is critical in making a room look well designed and function really well for you so the first thing you want to do is determine your focal point it could be a fireplace, a TV, or both. Um, piece of art or windows are typically the big major focal points. So determine that, and that is basically where you're going to want all the attention directed when somebody comes into the room. Hence, your furniture will be directed towards that point as well. So I know that's probably pretty common sense, but thought I'd say it. So the basic rules of thumb for furniture placement in a room, number one, try not to line the walls around the room with furniture. Now I say that, but I realize in some smaller spaces, that's not an option. You're, you're going to have to do that, which is okay. There's some ways around that to make it look good. So don't panic if that's the only way you're going to be able to do it. We'll talk about that. Um, if you have an irregular shaped room, say it's L shaped or really long, which is pretty typical. I run into that a lot. You're going to create one focal point area, like what we already talked about, and then you can create zones within that room. Say it's a really long space. You have your TV and main seating area on one end. On the other end, maybe you put a bookcase and a lounge chair and a lamp and you create a reading nook. Or you have a gaming area with a small game table. I don't mean video games. I mean like board games or cards. So sorry, kids, not going to vote for video games. My son plays enough of them. I get it. Let's not do that. Um, in Placing furniture, you also need to think about creating conversation areas. Obviously, you want your chairs and sofas or sectionals, whatever you have, to all be grouped together in a way that people, when they're sitting there easily without craning their neck, can see everyone and can have a nice conversational space. So remember that when placing your furniture to create those conversation areas. The other thing to think about is create balance within the space. Say you have a sectional and a big lounge chair and two tiny little side chairs. You don't want to put all the heavy pieces on one side of the room and then you've got these two little small chairs and maybe a small end table on the other side because it's gonna look super unbalanced and weighted differently. So you wanna blend sizes and shapes of furniture, shapes as far as, it, let's say you have a coffee table and end tables and maybe some lamps. You don't want everything to be circular. You don't want everything to be round. You want to break it up, mix it up with different size and shaped furniture. Another thing that you can do is use that coffee table. I recommend it if at all possible. There's many, many sizes and ways to do coffee tables, but it anchors the space. Um, let's say you don't have a lot of room for a coffee table. You can get uh, two, let's say, ottomans or poofs and put them side by side. You can get two low side tables and put them side by side. You can play with like a uh, round, smaller round table. You could do nesting tables. There's a lot of ways around doing this so that you're able to have that space that anchors the center of your furnishings with this coffee table. And it allows for a lot of function because you always want somewhere to set your drink or your book, um, have some decorative accessories and make it look really nice. So again, coffee tables, if at all possible, are great. The other thing that is important is that every 
seat should have a table of some kind, whether it be a little accent side table, a true full size side table, or that coffee table or console table behind the sofa, let's say, within arm's reach. So again, you can put down your drink, put down your book, put down whatever you're holding and be able to not have to get up to do those things. Um, and lastly, what's important for pulling an entire space together and whether or not you have hardwood or carpet, area rugs are your friend. It instantly creates a sense of holding all the furniture pieces together. Those furniture pieces should all touch this area rug. It doesn't have to go all the way under the sofa or the lounge chairs. It just needs to be touching them at some point so that whole space feels joined together. So I'm going to show you some examples of what I'm talking about, and I'm going to flip my screen around and show you. Okay, so here I have the same floor plan side by side, and the floor plan on the left is a don't. And I'm going to explain why as we walk through them. So in the don't floor plan, you can see when we walk in, we have this huge console piece against a table to on the right hand side of the front entry. That piece, number one, the door's going to knock into it if you can kind of see that door swing on there. Number two, that piece is way too big for that wall. You want to leave at least a couple feet on each side of whatever piece of furniture you're putting against a wall to give the wall a chance to stand out as well and not look like it feels overcrowded. So as you go to the seating area, you'll see that your sofa is against the wall, which is fine in that particular case. <clears throat> you have an end table kind of crammed into that corner and that area rug is not underneath the furniture pieces and looks way too small. And that coffee table is also way too small for the space. So those are no-nos. And as you can see, we've got big bulky furniture on the left side of the grouping and then this little dainty chair on the right side. So it looks super unbalanced, doesn't work. And also, if you notice at the bottom of the picture, there's kind of a rounded cabinet with the TV sitting on top of it and the seating, the grouping is offset. So that obviously is not making that TV area a focal point and it's gonna make it really, really hard to watch TV. Um, the console table that is behind the love seat that backs up to the dining room, it's fine to do that in theory. In this particular case, it's cramping the dining table, and when the people sitting there are pushing back, they're going to either bump into it or it's going to be tight for them to stand up and get out from the dining table. And lastly, on the don't, you'll see the area rug underneath the dining table is way too small. You want it to come out about at least 18 inches, which I'll show you in a different uh, screenshot later on minimum dimensions for all these types of things. So the do picture on the right, you'll see I reconfigured the space. There is a console table behind the sofa, but it is not encroaching into that foyer area. And those two little white rectangles underneath that console table are poofs. And Actually, what I forgot to say before is you want enough seating for everybody that lives in the house as well as two extra seats. So let's say you have a really large family of six. So right there, one, two, three, four, five, six seats on those couch and love seat are all taken up. That's okay because those two poofs, you can pull out and use them as extra seating as necessary. And then of course you could always pull those dining chairs over, but 
it's nice to be able to accommodate those extra people easily. The black rectangle on the right as you walk in is a either narrow console table or bookshelves. But as you see, it's shorter in length so it doesn't overtake the wall and the door swing is not going to bump into it. And I nixed the rug altogether under the dining table because it might look a little crowded. However, if you did want to put one in, I'd say it's doable. I would not go to, I'd do the minimum range of 18 inches perimeter around the outside of the dining table edge, which again, we'll talk to, about that in a little bit. And in the next plan, this is another kind of an unusual layout. And on the left-hand side is our don't. And you can see that on the upper left corner, we've got the end table wedged right against the wall and against the love seat. And the love seat, it comes right up to the door frame. So it looks super cramped and tight in there. The area rug, way too small. There's no coffee table and there's no place to put a little a side table between those two chairs. So those people are kind of floating on an island by themselves and they have nowhere to set anything down. <clears throat> Across the way on the right hand side, there's two big pieces of furniture and those are actually bookcases and a TV over on that wall. So you're kind of blocking things to begin with and the scale is way too big for the scale of the furniture pieces that are on the other side. In the dining area, you can see that the table is offset and the area rug extends past the end walls um, on that little jut into the space, which I know that that table is kind of the exact length, but you don't want of that wall, but you don't want to go too far into the other spaces. And then you have this huge walkway and you're not doing anything with that. So on the do plan, you can see that I have a sectional in there, which it's a small space. So that's a great way to make use of as much seating area as possible because you don't have a dead corner in between, let's say, a sofa and a love seat. And you have a coffee table that is in within arm's reach of all the seating areas as well as a side table. And I did put in a floor standing lamp in the corner, which is nice for reading um, <clears throat> to create kind of a cozy feeling environment. And then those two circles on across from the sectional are ottomans or poofs. Again, it's a small way to add extra seating as necessary, but doesn't get in the way. And then on the wall that has the TV, we have kind of a reading area with that little chair on an angle with its own little side table and then balancing and anchoring the other corner with a small tree, artificial or real. I have to do artificial, otherwise they definitely end up dead. So hopefully you have a green thumb. But if you don't, artificial is great. Just don't get the cheap looking one. Splurge and spend the extra money, please. And then in the dining area, I have a rug that is a better size for that space and the table is a better size. You don't want to overtake a space and crowd in too much furniture, which we will also talk about here in a little bit. And then, so it doesn't have dead space. I have a buffet against the wall in the dining area. Again, it's functional, useful, and it creates a nice anchor on the other side of that space. Okay, on this plan, we are talking about the don't side, and we're going to look at the upper left corner with the dining area. As you can see, we have a round table, but a really large rectangular, or actually it looks kind of square space. So that table is not big enough to make sense in the space 
so that needs a bigger table and therefore a bigger rug. And that rug's not even big enough for this round table, which you can, that brings up the point, bring in a rectangular rug with a round table. But if you have any question about what it looks like, just don't do it. Get a larger round rug and you'll be safe. If you have a rectangular table, get a rectangular rug. It'll make your life easier. And then we're going to go down to this little buffet that's on an angle in the corner. There's really no reason to do this. Sometimes in a really tight space, you have to do something like this in order to be able to walk by to get past it. But in this case, you can flatten it out against a wall. Um, then you've got a tree. And sometimes, or a lot of times, I'll use a tree to anchor a corner. However, that corner is the main walkway. So you don't want to put that there. You need that out of the way so you can get through easily. Then when you go down to the living area, you'll see that the room, the rug is too small for the space. It's not underneath the furniture. The love seat sticks out past the wall. And there's really nothing on the other side at all. So you have this big dance floor area that makes no sense whatsoever. So you can see lining the walls in this one isn't great the way it's done. On the right side, on the do side, you can see in the dining room <clears throat> that I do have that tree in there. However, it's in that far corner. So it's not going to get in anybody's way. And you may want to scoot it over to the left um, just so that door isn't completely blocked. You will see that I have a larger size dining table in there with a larger size area rug rotated the other way to make use of that whole room and a larger scale buffet that isn't too big for that wall, but it is the right size for the size table that it's going with. Then as you go down into the living area, you will see it used a sectional because you do have the shorter side and the longer side there to make that L shape, which yes, I know it is along the wall, but because this is an odd space, that's necessary. So again, not as big a deal as you would think because we are pulling some chairs in that are floating in the room. All of these again are on top of an area rug. And behind those chairs, I have a console table, which again, kind of anchors them and gives a stopping visual stopping point so that you see a division that's very clear between the kitchen and the living area. And then that plant there kind of softens the area that's a dead space between the seating area and that console table. Okay, now let's talk about bedrooms. So on the left, on your don't picture, you can see that the bed is on the wall with the door as you enter, which you never, ever want to do, if at all possible. You want to have your bed across from the door or on the side wall. Whichever wall is able to hold the bed that is not on the same side as the door is where you're aiming for. So you can see because it's on the wall that's got the door, you're kind of cramming in side tables, bedside tables, and that's not a good look. You have the dresser pushed up into the corner of the space. Again, you don't want to do that because it feels too cramped and doesn't look good. And then I have a basket with some extra pillows and blankets, and that's pretty, and I love using that in a bedroom. However, because it's deeper than the dresser, it creates this weird walk around where you have to go shimmy past that first before you can get to the dresser. So on the right hand side on the do page, I have the bed flipped around opposite the door. I've got room for the two end tables without feeling cramped. I have that basket in the corner because it fits number one really well, stays out of the way. Number two, the other place it could go is in the exact opposite corner across the way, kind of in the top left of that room. And the dresser is scooted down so it is more centered on the wall.
And in this final bedroom, you will see that on the don't side, again, the bed is on the same side as the entry into the bedroom, which is a no-no if at all possible. Then you have an area rug and a seating area in the bottom left corner. Number one, the area rug should be under the bed, not anywhere else in the room. And then there's a dresser next to that seating area. And that creates kind of this big, heavy corner. And then you've got your bed, which is the focal point of the room, kind of hanging out by itself in this upper right corner. So it just looks funky, doesn't look right, which it's not. So we're going to talk about what is. The one on the right, the do picture has the bed across from the main entry into the space. You have your dresser directly across from your bed, which nicely anchors that wall because they're two big pieces of furniture. So not putting them on the same wall is a good idea. I put a bench at the end of the bed and a larger area rug. And then as far as a reading nook, that top right corner, which is in dead space for lack of a better term, it's a perfect place to put a little chair and side table and lamp. And then my basket with extra pillows and blankets is in the opposite corner and anchored the corner in the bottom left with a tree. So hopefully this made sense and it feels a little bit better now as far as thinking about how to lay out your furniture. Okay, so here are some examples of overcrowded rooms, which the first one you're going to say, Lori, you're crazy. That looks beautiful. What are you talking about? So this person did a really good job of designing the space as far as furniture, accessories, colors, etc. However, it is a very tiny room and there are a lot of furniture pieces. First of all, that coffee table. Let's talk about that. It is big and bulky. I would consider something much lighter in scale that's just a top with four legs. It's completely open underneath, maybe even a glass top so that it's there, but it's very minimally invasive as far as when you look at the space. Then we have a bulky end table on the right side of that sofa. Again, I do something a lot more streamlined and make that whole corner feel a little lighter. And then there's two lamps. In this size space, I really don't think it's necessary to have two lamps. I think the one on the right makes sense. The one on the left, there's the window and lots of natural light. So again, really not necessary. And that little chair and table over in the left corner, I think is okay. I might flip that and put the chair on the other side. So the table is there for function, but it's kind of hidden. So it doesn't look like one more actual furniture piece. The picture below, I'm sure we've all either lived in that or been to friends or family's houses that look like this. It is boom, 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 giant pieces of furniture that all look super comfy. However, it overwhelms the room. It takes away from the fireplace, which is the focal point. And honestly, I have no idea how you even get into that space to sit down. You have to shimmy through between sofas or something. I don't know. So this, I would keep maybe those two chairs and the sofa, get rid of the recliner that is closest to us, the two ottomans, a coffee table. Yes, maybe not that one, but that would be fine. I don't think we need three lamps in this room. Um, there's just a lot going on as far as design in here, but the main point is, is if you have the stop now and go get rid of the all the pieces I talked about. It'll function a lot better. And as I said, you want seating for your family plus two more. So if you have to put those ottomans 
tuck them in somewhere under a table and pull them out when you need them, that would be a good way to go. All right, these two bedrooms. So I know these four poster beds can be popular. They go in and out of style. Um, this one is really chunky and really overwhelming for this room. Visually, even though they don't take up a lot of space in reality, but visually they take up a ton of space. Then you have two side tables, some kind of either a dresser or credenza unit closest to us, a dresser with a mirror on that right wall, and some kind of an armoire as you walk into the space on the right. So again, boom, 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 furniture, furniture, furniture everywhere. I would be claustrophobic standing in this room. So you need to realize what the scale of your space is and buy furniture accordingly. Unless you have some massive bedroom with 10 foot ceilings, just stay away from four poster beds. And a little secret tip, which ironically I have a four poster bed, um, much more modern than this. But when we moved to where we live currently, I took the two posts off the end of the bed and the finials unscrew and you can screw those finials right into where the post unscrews and boom, you just have a finished bed with two posters on the headboard side and it really reduces the size and scale of the bed visually. So design secret right there, write it down. And let's see, in this room below that on the don't, it is full of furniture. We have the bookcase, the little right rocking chair, a credenza at the foot of the bed, a side table, something else next to the side table, the beds in front of a window, which it looks like there's no option in this room. So you got to do what you got to do, but it's just crazy, overwhelming furniture. You need to not have that bookcase, number one, because I don't think we need to display teddy bears and whatever, unless it's a little kid's room. And we don't need a rocking chair. And that piece at the bottom of the bed could actually go on the wall where the bookcase is, which would make a lot of sense and get it out of a walking pathway to go around to the side of the bed. And you just have the one table on the side of the bed and get rid of whatever that other piece is. And boom, it will look better, I promise. So don't do that and dining room. So you can see dining rooms can fill up quickly. If you have your table and your typical six chairs, um, a buffet and maybe a hutch like they have. And then there's also some kind of other credenza piece in there too. Uh, it's just overwhelming and too much. You can see that if people back up with their chair, they're going to bump into that furniture. So that's a big no-no one because this looks like expensive furniture, maybe antique, and you don't want it getting broken or dinged up. But it's just too much for this room. I would take out the big hutch unit and whatever the side piece is on the bottom right. And depending on, it's hard to tell because the picture cuts off the other walls either move the table down and put that shorter buffet unit at the end or shift your table to one side or the other. And I know that you have to put it below your light fixture. However, it does look like the light fixture might be offset and you could put the low buffet where the taller one is, or you can swag your light fixture, which is a little design trick that you do when you need to move the location of your light, but don't want to deal with changing the electric and dealing with all the ceiling patchwork. So you just put a, a hook in the ceiling and swag your chain over, let it droop a little bit, and voila, you have a new location for your light fixture. 
In the bottom picture, you can see an example of a table that's too small for a space. So this space is pretty large. The light fixture is offset. So obviously they're assuming you're going to have some kind of a buffet or hutch piece in here as well. So if you can't get a bigger table, then add some furniture to the space. Add a buffet, add some kind of additional seating so you can create, again, like a zone for drinking coffee or, you know, put a coffee bar and a chair in there, lounge chair, reading nook, something like that. Another hack if your table isn't big enough, and I actually did this years ago when I couldn't afford to buy a new table. My husband is handy and he made a new top and it was much larger and just sat on the top of my other table and work like a charm. You can also find tables online on Facebook Marketplace in thrift shops. If you don't like the base, you just take that off, use the top, and boom, brand new table for cheap. So that is my two cents on overcrowding or undercrowding. And we will move on to the next thing. And the final thing that I want to talk about on furniture placement is minimum clearances. Coming off of the overcrowding section, I think it's important to pay attention to these things. So I have the floor plan with a family room and a dining area in it. So as you come into the space at the bottom, you're going to see that there is your living area on the left-hand side with a sectional, a coffee table, and an accent chair. So think about clearances as far as walking through a space. You want probably at least 30 inches, 30 to 36 in that little area there, just so you can clear the space easily. It doesn't feel crowded or too tight because you do want some breathing areas for lack of a better description that you don't want, like I said earlier, furniture, furniture, furniture everywhere. It gets too tight and exhausting and too much to look at. So if you keep that clearance there between different seating areas, that is a good rule of thumb. The spacing between your coffee table and your seating area is usually about 14 to 18 inches. That makes it easy to navigate around the coffee table, but still be able to reach out and set things on the coffee table without it being a mile away. And then there's a console table behind the sectional between that and the stairway. So you can see you want a minimum, I mean, 36, maybe 42 is great. If you can get at least 42, if not more, then you're golden. Just so that, again, the traffic flow, if you have somebody coming up, somebody going down, you don't want to have to squeeze by each other as you walk through that area. In your dining area, between the wall and the edge of the table, it's basically your space to back up when you're sitting at a kitchen table, dining table. You want three feet minimum. That way the person can push their chair out without bumping the wall and without being able to or having to squeeze out. So three feet is a good rule of thumb for the absolute minimum. The space between the edge of the rug and the edge of the table, you want minimum, and that's bare minimum, 18 inches to 30 inches. That way it's not too tight and your chairs are hanging off the edge of the rug and it's not too big so that your table looks dinky sitting on your area rug. And again, the three foot minimum from the table edge to the wall and then I have, because this is kind of a major walkway in this space between the kitchen, the living room, and then the back hallway, I have four and a half feet. That way, if somebody backs up with their chair, there's still space for 
somebody to walk behind them and not have to stop and wait for them to push their chair back in. So these are typical minimum clearances and hopefully that helps determine what you're doing when you lay out your furniture. Okay, hopefully that was really helpful and makes you feel a little more comfortable being able to place furniture in your home. And as always, if you like what you saw, please like, subscribe, and share. And if not, just keep that to yourself on the DL. Thanks and have a great day.